The astrolabe was created around 200 BC. The creation is often credited to a Greek astronomer Hipparchus. However, mathematician Abd al-Rahman al-Sufi has also credit to this invention to the Islamic world. The astrolabe was created by Greek astronomers and was written about by Greek scholars, but the invention was introduced to Islamic scholars. The mater is the main body. The edge is called the lip. This is where the scale degree and that scale of hours are engraved. The hollowed out part of the mater is called the womb and it contains the latitude plates. The re was sometimes called the star net. It carries an elliptical ring with star pointers and can be rotated over the latitude plates underneath. The star pointers point at particular stars as the re is turned to the stars on the celestial plate. All of the stars are at a certain point on the latitude underneath, all of which are labeled, and these stars are visible through the cutout sections of the re. The elliptical ring is the annual pathway of the sun through the sky. A belt extending around 6 degrees north and south of the ring is called the zodiac. Within this belt, the motion of the planet and the sun are probable. The zodiac was divided into 30 degree intervals, giving us a zodiac calendar. The plate contains a celestial sphere that appears to rotate around the Earth, and they are mapped on the plate of an astrolabe. The celestial sphere is mapped using stereographic projection, a mathematical technique. This technique allows 3D spheres to be shown as a 2D plate. Because each latitude needs its own projection, most astrolabes come with its own individual latitudes, and all of it is usually stacked on top of each other within the astrolabe. The rule is located on the front of the astrolabe, marking the hours at it turn. It was also used to locate positions on the plate or re and relate them to the number of hours marked on the limb. Alidate. The alidate is a rotating bar located on the back of an astrolabe which moves the front. And the difference between this and the rule is that it has little notches or veins, which are used as sights. The altitude is measured by lining up an object, using an object such as a star, in the two sighting holes. Then it reads off the altitude in degrees on a scale around the edge. Normally, astrolabes aren't used as much today because of the advance in technology. However, the quantity of technology used to be low, and therefore astronomers resulted in using the astrolabe to determine time and position. The alidate, which moves outside of the astrolabe, is moved until a ray of light can be seen in your palm. This is also the ruler, and you want to align it until you get a parallel ray of light. The ends of a ruler will point you to a time and date on the back of the asteroid. You will use the other side with the pointer to check the placement of certain stars and planets that you can see. If you know where you were in time, you could use the back of the stars and planets. The astrolabe was used for astronomy. It helped astronomers determine the position of the sun and the stars, was a vital part in timekeeping, navigation, and astronomical equations. It helped astronomers calculate the difference between the meridian and the horizon in proportion to the sun and other vital stars. This tool was important because it helped ancient historians, who didn't have complex machines like clocks, determine the time. This was especially important in the Islamic world because they would know what time it was and when they would have prayed. It was also important because using astrolabes, you could find out your position and navigate when you go off course and get lost. This was important in the Islamic world because Arabia was full of desert and it was easy to go 